Hey, how's it going guys? Florp here back with another video bringing you the best budget gaming PC under $400 in June of 2017. This is actually after mail-in rebates. Without any mail-in rebates, the total is going to be $403, but with mail-in rebates, you can actually get this PC for around $347. So for under $400, not only are you getting an awesome gaming machine, you're also just getting a really awesome, pretty solid computer. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get things started. Uh, all of the parts are going to be listed and linked down below in the description if you guys want to buy this computer. Like I said, they're all down there for you. Anyway, starting things off with the processor, I chose the Intel Pentium G4560 3.5 GHz dual core processor. Some of you may be wondering why I went with a Pentium processor for this PC build. First of all, it's a pretty awesome it's a pretty awesome processor. It has a brand new KB Lake architecture and it's uh, a dual core CPU with hyper threading, which means that each core can process two threads, effectively making it a quad core CPU. Two physical cores, two theoretical cores. The games and software that you're going to be uh, running with this processor is going to notice that it has four cores and it will perform uh, that way. Furthermore, even though it does not have the same frequency as other chips like the Intel Core i3-6100, the, uh, the, pre the previous Intel i3 lineup uh, Skylake CPU, I believe that has like a 3.9 GHz clock speed. However, when you pair this processor with a higher frequency RAM, like 2400 MHz RAM, it actually does perform better in gaming than the i3-6100, even though it has a higher frequency. I looked up benchmarks, and that's the case. That's, that's what happens. So I actually did go with 2400 MHz RAM, but we'll get into that later. So yeah, it's a pretty awesome processor, and it does not bottleneck your video card. This processor will not be the best choice for editing. It can do some light editing, but it might take a while. However, this processor will do just fine for recording, as most of that is done in the GPU anyway. But for gaming, this processor is going to be great. So if you want an awesome gaming machine, this processor is going to be the right choice for you, especially for this price point with this video card. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some benchmarks in-game with this computer so you know what to expect performance-wise, uh, you know, frame rate settings, what you're going to be able to do with this computer uh, for $400. And uh, like I said before, this computer is awesome for $400. So anyway, starting things off with CSGO, uh, as you can see here, uh, 1080p on high, the highest settings in 1080p on CSGO, this computer is going to maintain an average of over 100 FPS at all times, like 130 FPS. Uh, it's pretty solid. It's, it's awesome. Keep in mind, guys, this is actually tested on an RX 460 with only 2 gigabytes of dedicated memory, as well as 2133 megahertz RAM, not 2400 megahertz. You can actually expect even better performance from your computer than you're going to be seeing on screen, but this is a pretty good uh, rough estimate of what you're going to be seeing from your computer. So this next one here, we're going to be playing The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Uh, 1080p resolution with low settings, you are going to be maintaining uh, an average of, of around 45 FPS. Uh, the lowest dip, I believe, was like 33, but definitely playable in 1080p. Not the highest settings, but if you're gonna, if you're willing to turn down your resolution, you can definitely bump up the bump up those graphical settings. Uh, but like I said, for $400, 1080p on this game is is absolutely excellent, and you can expect to see even better performance from your PC as opposed to this benchmark. Alright, so now we're in GTA 5, 1080p with medium, high, and even some ultra settings, uh, mostly high though. We're going to be maintaining around 45 to 50 FPS. This game is a bit more uh, CPU intensive than GPU intensive, and uh, like I said before, uh, many times, since we're going to be using a 2400 megahertz setup with our RAM, you're actually going to get even better performance in this game. I would expect to see uh, around 55 FPS average in this game, but yeah, definitely, once again, very, very playable. Alright, so here we have Battlefield 1 in 1080p. Ultra settings, you're going to maintain, or once again, around 43 FPS. Uh, go ahead and turn down those settings to medium, uh, and you're going to definitely be able to achieve 55 to even 60 FPS. If you're willing to uh, turn down your resolution, definitely 60 plus FPS at all times. The lowest frame dip in this footage, I believe, goes to around 39 uh, but like I said, an average of around 45 FPS. And an added bonus of this processor, since it has KB Lake, the new KB Lake architecture, you actually can stream in 4K from Netflix. Netflix requires you to have a KB Lake uh, chip in order to stream in 4K. So you'll be able to do that, which is pretty cool. Anyway, moving on to the motherboard for this build, I chose the MSI B250M Pro VD Micro ATX LGA1151 motherboard for $63. 
I chose to bump up the price by about $8 to pick up this motherboard because it does have a B250M chipset, which means it supports DDR4 2400MHz RAM instead of DDR4 2133. So I thought that it would be a, a better choice for an extra $8. You will get some more performance out of your processor this way. Uh, it's not the best motherboard on the market, but it is pretty solid. It has a, a 4.7 out, uh, out of 5 star review. It has two RAM slots. It supports DDR4 2400MHz with the max memory of 32GB. Uh, it does have six SATA 6GB per second ports onboard Ethernet and onboard USB 3s, which is pretty solid. So anyway, moving on to the RAM, like I said before, we are going to go with 2.6 of 4GB of Crucial Ballistic Sport LT DDR4 2400MHz memory. This is going to harness dual channel RAM for $60, so nothing much to be said about that. It's solid RAM, it's, it's red RAM, I mean, it looks cool. Uh, and like I said, the, the, the main part of this is that it is 2400MHz, meaning you are going to get some extra performance out of your processor. For the mass storage drive, I chose the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1 terabyte, 3.5 inch, 7200 RPM internal hard drive for about $50. This is the go-to mass storage drive in every single build I've seen on the internet, including all of mine. I have it in my computer, and it's an awesome hard drive. Hasn't failed me. A terabyte of storage is a lot. You're going to have plenty of room for your games, music, etc. I did leave out a solid state drive in this build, simply because I don't think it's very practical to include a solid state drive in, in such a low budget build. It is nice to have, and if you want to pick one up, be my guest, but uh, I think it's smarter to leave that out and, and put your money elsewhere uh, in budget builds, like the video card. Speaking of which, I chose the Gigabyte Radeon RX 460 4GB WinForce OC video card for $100. This video card has 4GB of dedicated memory, which means you can run uh, games in 1080p very well, and maybe even run a dual monitor setup. Uh, furthermore, this thing is clocked in at 1.09 GHz with a, a boost clock speed of 1.21 GHz. The TDP rating is 75 watts, uh, and it is a, a pretty powerful card. I mean, for $100, you're getting a pretty good video card. It's actually pretty insane to see how far video cards have come uh, in terms of what you can get with a bang for your buck. This video card is pretty good. Uh, it can run Battlefield 1, 1080p Ultra, uh, pretty close to 60 FPS. It's a really good video card. And because it is an AMD card, you can use AMD Game Capture to record with little to no impact on your frame rate, uh, less than 1% of an impact. So, going with the power supply, it shows the EVGA 500 watt 80 plus bronze certified ATX power supply for $37. Unfortunately, I could not fit a modular power supply into this build. Simply would not happen. However, you can figure out ways to have good cable management with an EVGA 500 watt power supply. Uh, 500 watts is plenty for this build, as it, the uh, GDP rating of the entire build is 214 watts, which is pretty awesome. Lastly, the case. I chose the Cougar MX200 ATX Mid Tower case. Uh, I did have some trouble picking out a case for this build. I couldn't spend too much on one, so if you did want to buy a different case, you could shell out, uh, you know, an extra 20 bucks and get a different case. I chose the black and red case to match the RAM and the video card. Uh, I think this case does look cool. Uh, and it does have good cable management and good airflow. I've read reviews about it. It's got a five-star rating pretty cool case in my opinion It does support the video card and it has front panel USB 3 headers It also has six three and a half inch drive bays and one internal uh, Two and a half inch drive bay which means you will have plenty of room to add more hard drives in the future if you choose to do so that's going to bring our grand total to $403 before any mail-in rebates, but like I said before, there are so many mail-in rebates on this on this uh, PC, you can probably get this price down to about $350. As of making it right now, it's about $354. Uh, mail-in rebates are always subject to change, but like I said, there's always going to be a few, so you can definitely get this cheaper than $400. That's it for me. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This PC is pretty awesome, and all of the parts are linked down below in the description. Be sure to like the video or dislike it depending on what you thought. And be sure to subscribe for more builds just like this one. Hope you guys have a great day. I will see you guys next time. Peace.